dentist would not approve of that. Go, 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 go. Down. Whoop. Almost lost it. Make one big mess instead of a whole bunch of little messes. So working with this off the boat, so much easier than screwing it into the deck and then having to jostle around and work on it in place. Well, let's get started. Welcome back. Today, I'm gonna to show you my processes for putting together and installing your accessories on the standard console from pontoonstuff.com. This boat's getting a five switch panel, horn, nav light, some accessory stuff, the Deckmate Bluetooth stereo. There's a whole video we did for pontoon stuff a little while back on their website under restoration resources. So take a look at that. A uh, little 12 volt outlet. The steering system, it's a rotary quick release, uh, but this little bracket's gotta go right here so we can install the steering. Well, let's get started. As I mentioned in the large console installation, I'll go ahead and link that uh, in the comments and here hopefully, but I mentioned in that, clean your hands. Whenever you're touching the rotor molded plastic, if your hands are greasy and dirty, it's gonna transfer to the plastic. It cleans off easy with dish soap and water and a rag. Make it easy on yourself. Don't get your new console all dirty. I have stencils for this kind of stuff. You can make them easily. I have stencils for the steering system, for the switch panel. 12 volt is just an inch and a quarter hole that we're gonna drill to drop this in. And then the stereo, I'll show you a quick trick on how to template that out. First things first, I'm gonna go ahead and put my switch panel in uh, and then we'll move from there. You could design this however you want in terms of where everything goes. The one thing to keep in mind is you're steering your helm behind the plastic, behind your console, you have to fit this guy in there. It's gonna insert out through, so this is gonna be sitting behind where you can't see it. If you put your switch panel right next to it where this is gonna go, that can lead to some problems. So what I tend to do when I'm putting my steering in and I lay my console out, is I put the, the switch panel on the opposite side of where the rotary housing is actually gonna be. And my steering cable is gonna come up from under the pontoon, it's gonna come up and bend right in to this hole here. If I orient it this way, that leaves me plenty of room uh, for my steering cable to come up and get in underneath the switch panel. So I'll put my switch panel kind of mid midway up here or even towards the top. And that way I don't have any interference with my steering cable, the housing, or my switch panel or any of my other electronics. I'm gonna start stenciling on everything and then we'll cut it all at once. Make one big mess instead of a whole bunch of little messes. You could measure it out and try to get it perfect, but you're gonna have a little bit of wiggle room uh, when you actually install a switch panel to square it up, eyeball it, measure it. So I cut, I make my cutout on an eyeballing it sort of method. And I'm gonna go in this upper right hand corner. I know I won't have anything in my way up there uh, in terms of the steering cable. We'll move on to our steering. Again, I have a little stencil cut out for that. There's a dimple in the center. I'm gonna just put my center hole lined up. For my charger, I'm gonna do my stereo in this upper right hand corner. So I think about where's the phone gonna be. It might be resting right here or even up in a cup holder. So I'm just gonna put a mark roughly where that's gonna be. We'll go over in this corner. And I'm just gonna drill a hole for that, so no big deal there. Your stereo comes in this styrofoam packaging. What it does, conveniently, this small circle houses the back of your stereo really well. The front just makes it nice and flush for shipping. I'm gonna use that smaller inner circle as my pattern, or my stencil. Join my inner circle, subscribe. I'm gonna just kind of center it up in this corner here. It's round, so it's not gonna be, it's not gonna throw your eyeballs off and make you go crazy if it's not perfect. We just do a circle, easy enough. If you're doing like a gauge package or individual gauges, you can lay them out wherever you want. But this is pretty straightforward, pretty standard for a pontoon boat. Switches for navigation. I like to put power to the stereo, that sort of stuff. Steering, a charger. It's pretty straightforward installation. Important note, this console, there is room for a couple of different manufacturers for the binnacle shift and throttle. 
to mount on here. I would go to a large console, the, the pontoon stuff, large console, if you must do a bigger binnacle, like on an older Johnson Evinrude. Some of the newer Mercury uh, binnacles are a little bit beefier. But if you have the smaller Quicksilver Mercury binnacle, the smaller Yamaha binnacle, uh, those will work all the way to the edge here and you'll have room to operate there, no problem. But just something to keep in mind. This one, the control box is gonna get mounted on the railing, so we'll make that work when we get to installing everything on the boat. So I'm gonna take my Dremel tool, I'm gonna cut out all of my stuff all at once, then I can vacuum out the inside of the console and we can get to installing everything. leave the line so I cut just on the inside of the line in the case of the stereo here it is a little bit snug we'll just cut out a little bit extra go right on the line with that and that way everything will fit you got to leave yourself the opportunity to cut a little bit more away you don't want to see into the back of the console we don't want water getting in there and everything so cut on the inside of the line play it safe you can always cut a little bit more away Got everything to fit nice. Uh, there's a better explanation, a deeper explanation for your steering install in the large console. Uh, we'll kind of breeze through it. In this one, you can always refer to the large console install for a little more information about those rotary helms and how those go in. That brass piece is gonna embed down into the console. Get a wrench on the inside. Socket on the outside. This is something if you have an extra set of hands on this console, it really helps for somebody to hold your helm or your rotary helm from behind because we have to line these three holes up just right on our bracket. It's not like you can put it here, 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 here. It has only a few ways that it can go in there and this, the bolts line up. You need to get all three bolts in. I'm gonna show you that it can be done by yourself, but if you have an extra set of hands, call on them and get some help. What you'll see me do here is I'm just gonna get each one started. I suppose if you had longer arms, this would be a lot easier too. And now, I'm gonna take a 7 16 ratchet, deep well. These are not bolts you wanna break. Don't break these off. You're not getting them out. You don't want to end, end up having to spend an extra couple hundred bucks on a new steering system um, if yours is working perfectly fine. So hand tighten them to be safe. They just need to be snugged down. They don't need to be reefed on. They're just little quarter inch bolts. I'm gonna go ahead and hold off. I'm putting my steering wheel on until I've got everything in place where I want it. Sometimes that's the very last thing I'll do because it's not uncommon if you're working on the switch panel, it's easier to just pull the four screws out and then you can get access to the wiring on the back of the switch panel. I am gonna go ahead and screw in using number eight stainless screw, just three quarter inch to an inch screws. Nice and easy, take your time on these and then run it in just till it's snug. No need to go burying it and waiting for that impact to go, 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 go. <coughs> I'm gonna start with one corner on my switch panel. Then I can line up, I got a little bit of room to play with for the angle. The big thing I like to do while I have the console on the ground is the stereo. There's a couple posts that come out of the back. It's got a U bracket. It actually holds everything in place, so I'm just gonna tip it. That way I can get easy access right in there. So working with this off the boat, so much easier than screwing it into the deck and then having to jostle around and work on it in place. Everything's on here now. 
installed in place. Check the large console video for more details on your steering system for the rotary helm. But I am going to show you before we wrap up uh, that accent panel and how I go about installing the accent panel on this console. For every standard console, whether you're doing premium seats or classic, uh, you're going to have an accent panel. So on this one, this is the ivory with navy and a tan. Uh, it matches the seats real nice. What I do with these is I take them, I flip them over backwards, put it right on my lap, I take my hardware bag. Dentist would not approve of that. And first thing I do is I line up all the finish washers. So you, your finish washer, if you look at it, there's sort of a indented side, concave, or a convex side. Your screw is going to go into that concave side so that it fills that hole and it just becomes a nice little finish washer, gives you a nice finished look. You have holes from the back side. Sometimes you got to peel back some of the vinyl to find those holes, but there's six of them total. I take my screw and I go through the hole. I put my finger on the back so I can feel where the pressure is. And I'm going to create just a little bulge there with my screw. Maybe just poke the head through just a teeny bit. And then when I pull it back out, it's left a little mark. I can put my screw now back in that same little indent and just push and that's going to pop it through into the back side. So now that one's ready to be screwed into the console. So I'm going to go around and repeat that step again. Sometimes you have to kind of peel back the vinyl to find that hole to push through so you know where to run the screw through from the front side. got my six screws all ready to go, washers in. I've just pushed them through. These top ones, I did have to go through a layer of vinyl on the back side, so I used the screw gun to, to push it through and through. When I go to install this, I'm going to line it up. Again, this is one of those times where if you have a second set of hands, use it, but totally doable with one person. Big, big thing. Be gentle. Putting a hole in your brand new uh, accent panel, it's vinyled and beautiful and matches. Don't do that to yourself. We're kind of right in the middle of this project on this boat. So I'm not securing this to the floor quite yet, but to give you an idea of how I go about that, I check where I am in relation to my shift throttle cables, to my steering cable. I make sure that it's gonna line up the way I need it to for the layout of the boat. Then I can take, there's four heavy duty stainless screws. I put one of those in each corner to get it in place. I put at least two stainless bolts, quarter inch bolts through that are going to make sure that everything stays in place through bolted, big washer on the top and bottom with a locking nut, make sure that console's not going anywhere. Once I've secured that down, I cut my hole for my steering cable, my electrical to run. The last thing I do on most boats, literally the last thing I do, is I put this panel back on. Number two Phillips head, I line up my top corners because that's what people are going to see the most. When my spacing looks good, I'm going to start in the top corner and I'm just going to work each one in, keeping it nice and square and level where I want it. You're going to see the vinyl sink in just a little bit. I start nice and easy, just put a little dimple in the vinyl rather than driving it home. That's it. It's in. This console, if everything was already wired up and ready to go, it would be a wrap. We love sharing all of these how-tos with you. We want to keep passing that knowledge on to you so that when it comes time for your pontoon project, you've got some tools in your toolbox and you can get to work on it without having to ask a whole bunch of extra questions. So if you will, please like, comment below, tell us what you want to learn more about on your pontoon. But please, please, please hit that subscribe button, join our channel so we can keep feeding you more information about your boat and your pontoon and how to get it looking new again.